Hey everybody, welcome back to another reasonable price prediction, the series where we try to figure out where your favorite altcoins could be headed. Now today we're back with Avalanche and quick disclaimer, I do own Avalanche. So know that I will have some sort of bias. I will try to keep it as unbiased as possible, but it is something you should be completely aware of. Now again, like my last few videos, I'm mainly going to be talking about what Avalanche did around the halvings. And sadly, we don't have too much data for Avalanche. We only have since the last halving and even then we didn't have data that actually went through the halving across the halving avalanche launched in july of 2020 and sadly the halving took place in may in 2020 so we don't get to see how it would have played out if avalanche was around for this time but we can make small assumptions considering how close it really is to the halving and that brings me on nicely to what we saw after the halving with avalanche which is something we can talk about for sure because this is data that we actually have now zooming in we can see that that about two months after Avalanche's launch, it hit a ceiling. It hit a wall, a resistance, and it just couldn't break above. And this resistance was about $12. The highs were about $12, but it launched price of about $4.50, quickly rocketed up like a lot of altcoins do, especially in bullish times like where we were here. Again, after the halving, things are usually very bullish. But then what was unusual is we basically traded sideways for two months, only to then to lose all that value and go down to put in our all-time low of about $3, just below $3. Now you could argue this wick here is the all-time low. You would be technically correct. However, it is kind of a wick. It's extremely sudden and it is an extreme outlier. So I'm gonna say the average all-time low, just to make things easier and nicer, is about just below $3, kind of here, is when we got our all-time low. That's what I'll be considering for this video. And there's also an arrow leading from the halving to this big pink circle. So naturally, this is because I want to compare it to the current cycle that we're going through. And if we see we've just gone across the halving, we've had red weeks leading up to and passing the halving, which is never a bullish sign. And we can see that again, this white line that we've been following, that Avalanche has been following its whole kind of life bouncing off, we could be on our way to retesting this 30 weeks after the halving. And now while this is definitely a long shot, there's a lot of factors that could change this. It is definitely a possibility, especially if we break down below this resistance. Again, these time zones don't have to be precise. They can be 20 weeks, they can be 40 weeks. There's no guarantee, but it is something I think we could see play out. Again, this touch on the white line sometime after the halving. It is an unusual for coins to see a big pullback as well after the halving. However, one thing that would go against this is usually after the halving, the price never really returns to the lows we see at the halving. So if you buy on the halving week, you're most likely going to be buying at the low points for the upcoming cycle. Now, this current cycle that we've just left, the previous cycle, has been very unusual. So this abnormality could influence our coming cycle and make that abnormal as well. So we might see a return to these lows. Again, it's crypto, it's nothing guaranteed. But if we do, and if we do it, you know, roughly 30 weeks after the halving, that would bring Avalanche to a low of $13. And keep in mind the cycle low here was about $9. So we would more or less be returning to cycle lows. I personally doubt this will come to fruition, at least in this way, but it is something I wanted to make people aware of. Although that doesn't mean that I'm not saying I don't think we could have pullbacks in the recent coming weeks. I think it does really depend what happens here on this trend line. Do we bounce or do we break below? Having said that, if we take where we went from the halving, and again, we don't have the actual price that Avalanche was at during the halving, but if we assume it's basically similar to the launch price, we can say that Avalanche likely would have crossed the halving somewhere around $4.50. And if that is the case, you would have made a 3000% gain if you held from the halving to the all time high. Now, if we take a look at the current cycle, we're currently basically getting a 10th of what we got the first halving now at the second halving if it's going to return to its original all-time highs now i think we will return to here and i think most likely we will go above the fact that avalanche has been one of these strong contenders since about september when a select few of big currencies really popped off the fact that avalanche was one of these is a very bullish sign and while it didn't sort of reach the highs percentage wise that solana saw and it's not as close to its all-time high as Solana was slash is, I still think this is a very good sign. And as long as the gaming narrative doesn't trail off too much, I do think Avalanche will be a great performer and, and will have a lot of demand in the bull run. But again, nothing is a certainty, especially not in crypto. That's kind of all I want to talk about with the USD. Not too much to cover, really. I think the main interest is in the Bitcoin pair. Like usual, I know I'm always saying that, 
but especially for Avalanche. I think it's very interesting how similar these two kind of have played out. And it does kind of show the volatility that altcoins experience at the start compared to what they experience a few years later. Where here we had sharp declines and sharp recoveries. Here we've had a much slower, steadier descent, followed by, albeit a very sharp incline, but definitely not as sharp and as aggressive as the first one. Again, these two really do seem to be playing out very similarly. Although we didn't get this touch at the top during a similar time, we did get a strong move to the upside at this first cycle 14 weeks afterwards. And if we take when we got this one here, it was 12 weeks afterwards. So we still got these strong moves during the same time. It just didn't equate to as strong a move as before. And we came down, touched this low, whereas before we didn't really bounce. You could argue we bounced here off this wick. That is an argument to be made and a valid one. We didn't really bounce here last cycle, but now we've had a bounce and now we've finally broken down below in this current cycle. And you can see that last time Avalanche also broke down below. And what's interesting is that once Avalanche broke down below here, that kind of was a local bottom before the bull run, or at least the second wave of the bull run before extreme bullish action. And if you want to take this as gospel and assume that something similar will play out again, and again, it wouldn't be the most unreasonable thing considering we've had this play out so similarly up to now, you could see, again, a similar move, but perhaps more delayed or elongated than before. Because as we've seen, this cycle or what we've had recently is just not as volatile, not as compressed as what we got this first cycle. And as such, it would be more reasonable in my opinion, to expect a longer time frame. Now, if we measure how long it took here when we broke above, it was about nine weeks, so two months. And if you, you could get into the science of this and kind of measure how long were we in this downtrend for here? 25 weeks. How long were we in this downtrend for here? 63 weeks. So say this length of time is equivalent to two fifths of what we got last cycle or say a 2.5x in volatility, in length, duration, you could say that, okay, whatever time we get here, which was nine weeks, we just multiply that by 2.5, which would be somewhere around 22, 23 weeks. So if we go from where we broke down below, 22 or 23 weeks, that would put us at September at the end of this year, when you're expected to rally up. Now, this would be a bit contradictory because I think that's when we're expected to have rate cuts, at least in America and throughout Bitcoin's history. When the Federal Reserve in America have been cutting or hiking rates, Bitcoin and in general, the crypto space has not fared well because of it. So just something to keep in mind. But again, this cycle can always be different. This cycle has been different. There's no reason for it to stop being different now. It will continue to be different if it wants to be. I'm not trying to convince you in any either way. I'm just telling you things that have happened and therefore things that could happen. So in terms of what you can expect from here, well, again, if we're going to assume that we don't spend too long below this white line and then afterwards we rally up and have our sort of second wave of a bull run, which is very much like we saw here, this could be, you know, kind of equated to our first wave of the bull run. See 2021, we get crazy gains. Now we won't have gains similar because here we had 600 and 50% and here I think 400 is what we got. No, excuse me, 200 is what we got. So again, you could argue that's volatility diminishing. Funnily enough, if you kind of take 2.5, which is what we have and multiply it by 2.5, which is what we were measuring the time increase by in cycle, you would get something similar to what we got here. You would get somewhere around 6.5, which is very interesting and definitely could be something worth looking into yourself. You know, you can make a case that as the cycles go on, or as this cycle has gone on so far with Avalanche, we've seen a 2.5 increase in time for bearish periods to play out. And we've seen the gains that we've had this cycle to be two fifths of what we got this first cycle or this first bull run. Something very interesting. So again, if you want to go off that note, we'll measure what we got from this white support up to our high. We got a 600% move. Now, if you take two fifths of um, 600, that's going to be about 240% of a move. If we take that from here, it puts us close to our all time highs, basically. So I'll get a much better go of that 240. It will put you basically here where Avalanche was just before the collapse on the Bitcoin pair. 
which was at 20,000 Satoshis, 21,000 Satoshis. The all-time high being 26,000 Satoshis for Avalanche. So again, if you think Avalanche will go higher, you obviously don't want to be selling around this time. If you think that Avalanche will return to its all-time highs but not go much above or go slightly below, you might want to consider this as a selling point, a safe selling point, where maybe you sell 80% of your Avalanche holdings at this price. If we find out where Avalanche was here, if we find out where Avalanche was here on the Bitcoin pair, on the 4th of April 2022, we can see it was actually the start of the end and it was about $100. Now the all time high for Avalanche was about $150. You wouldn't have been catching the very top, but I think that's something important that people should recognize. You're never going to catch the top, so you shouldn't aim for it. It depends on your risk tolerance, but you might want to say, okay, I think Avalanche is going to reach this price, so I'm going to sell at 10% below this price or blah, blah, blah. That's something for you to figure out. But basically this way of kind of recording things and checking things, We'll put Avalanche at an all-time high of where it was at the start of the end for Avalanche this cycle. Sort of the bear run, the start of the bear run. Now, if you want to ignore all this 2.5 and 2 fifths method and just say, okay, Avalanche went up 600% last cycle from this low, I'm going to assume that Avalanche is going to go up another 600%. Uh, you're going to have to make me edit the chart, but what you're also going to see is an Avalanche somewhere around 43,000 Satoshis which is more or less close to double of what we got last cycle, exactly like double the high that we went from. It would be a 70% increase from our all time high, which I actually don't think is unreasonable. So again, there's both ways this could go. There's also arguments that we're just not in a bull run at the moment. We're in like a kind of fake out and we're likely to return to these lows. I mean, there's valid reasons for all of these claims. I would kind of be in the camp that we can't have a major bull run like we got in 2021 when the Fed is cutting rates or increasing rates, and while we're not in a cycle with such high interest rates. I think interest rates have to be low, stimulus has to be being stimulated, so that money can move down the risk curve into these riskier assets, which is uh, the cryptocurrency space. But that's just my take. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike, and tell me down below what I could have done better. Again, thanks so much for watching. Take care and peace.